bless the word of God. The word of God can heal us for whatever ails us. I'm a sure believer that if the word can heal you, then you won't be healed. Amen. How about tell God? Thank you. Why don't we rest on our feet while we receive the pastor of the Good Shepherd Church in West Haven, Connecticut? None other than Pastor Mark Rolls.
Come on. You know, when the Lord, when the Lord looked down at us, he said, it is not good for, for man to be alone. And when he looked at the woman, she was like, she can multitask. She can do it. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have that testimony, man. You know? So uh, I always tell folks in the church, you guys want to talk to the man that's driving the woman who knows what's going on. Uh, we'll talk to, uh, where's Pastor Anna? <laughs> God is good, though, but she's over there. She's getting, uh, catching up with a lot of administrative work. We have registered approximately 90 students from different churches for the glory of God. Amen? Uh, uh, so she's doing, she's doing well. She's doing well, but there's a lot of work uh, to get done. I have a young man with me who uh, uh, is going to be getting married soon. Amen? Brother Gene Cuban. Amen. One of our texts at the church, he plays the trumpet. Amen. A young man who loves the Lord. And um, uh, I did I did send out a text, you know, for some of the fellas to join me if they wanted to. But uh, Brother Gene was the only one who says, I'm here, Pastor. Amen. You know? Sometimes when, uh, uh, when we pastors have a commitment, uh, this is a good time to test who's with you, who's not with you. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Gene, for coming. You know, everything is a test, you know, in the Lord, everything is, <laughs> everything is a test. But we're happy to live. I'm, I'm happy. I, I'm, I'm at home. Amen. 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 I'm at home. You know, I, I, I feel like I don't, need, I don't even need an invitation here. I can just show up and you guys will always receive me. Isn't that, isn't that awesome? That is awesome, man. That is awesome. That the pastor who was the pastor here, 15 years, for 15 years he was here. As a matter of fact, he was the architect. When this building suffered a fire, he was the ar he was not only a pastor, but he was a full-time architect. And he's the one who designed all of this. Amen? When, when, when uh, the insurance went to repair all of this, he, all of this stuff wasn't like this. This used to be a bookstore. Amen? There's a lot of history here. This used to be a bookstore. So it wasn't really uh, churchy like now, you know. Right. But he was the man that God used uh, uh, to uh, uh, do all the designing and, and, and the work in this church. He called me today to let me know that uh, uh, he was diagnosed with cancer. Oh, wow. And he just, he's home recovering um, um, uh, from the surgery they just did on Monday. So I want to ask you guys, amen, this is great. I told him, you know what? We're going to get our, our prayer warriors. We're going to be praying for this. Amen. Amen. And I, I want to ask you, his name is William Marcano. William Marcano, in your personal prayers, you don't even have to know him. Just know that he's a brother in Christ. That's it. And let's pray for him so that the Lord will uh, uh, heal him and that he can recover completely uh, from this surgical procedure. Don't have to go through the process of chemo and, and any of that stuff. So just keep him in prayer. I want to speak to you guys tonight very briefly, hopefully. I say briefly, not get scared, but then I start talking a whole lot, you know. <laughs> but I want to briefly share with you, uh, I, I want to speak of the topic, the marks or the characteristic of a spirit-filled church. Amen. Yeah. Amen. We're celebrating 43 years of victory. Right. Well, there could not be no victory if there is no spirit of God amongst right. us. Amen. So it's, it, it's key to the life of the church. As a matter of fact, the church has no life without the life of the Spirit. Yes, Glory to God. Amen. So I want to talk to you of the marks of a Spirit-filled church. Glory to God. And how important that is to us, not only as a church collectively, but as members of the church individually. Yes. A lot of times what we expect to see in the church is the fact that it really begins with me. It really begins with me. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And then when we all get together as individuals and we start looking like one, this is what we're going to reflect. The very thing that we allow the Holy Spirit to do in my life, well, if you allow him to do it in your life, if you allow him to do it in your life, if you allow him to do it in your life, when we gather as a body, when we gather as a church, when we gather as a congregation, that's what the world is going to see. Uh, I've got, got somebody should have got excited to give that to the Lord and not know that. Yeah. I'm talking about the life of the Spirit and the marks 
of a church, when a church is spirit-filled, there is a life in the spirit that the Bible teaches and the Bible demands that we should live. It's not an option, Bishop. It's not an option. Now that we are in Christ Jesus, the Bible says we are a new creation. The old things have passed away. Behold! Behold! As, as if to say, hold on a minute. All things are new in Christ Jesus. Glory to God. But that newness of life is produced and is a result of a relationship with Jesus Christ and the sanctifying work of the Holy Ghost in my life. Now understand that the Holy Spirit will not do anything in me that I will not allow him to do. God will never impose himself on me. God will never rape me. <laughs> Forgive me for that. But God, ain't, God, is not a, God is not a rapist. He's not going to come and try to jump on you, glory to God, and make you do something you don't want to do. You've got to cooperate with God. You've got to surrender to the Lord. You've got to say, Holy Spirit, come and do with me as you want to do. I give myself. To, I don't know somebody's listening to me. Here tonight. I'm talking about marks of a spirit-filled church. Hallelujah. Things that God wants to achieve in my life and in your life so that we can be that reflection of Jesus Christ in this world. Because what the world really needs to see is not an Assemblies of God church. It's not a mission board church. It's not just another congregation on a corner. It's not just a religious, another religious organization. They need to see a people full of the Holy Spirit reflecting Jesus Christ wherever my God. I wish I had. It. I don't know if you're hearing me. I'm talking about marks of a Holy Ghost filled church. Yes. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And this is what makes 43 years of you know a, a victory, 43 years anniversary, a lot more sweeter. Yes. That we can live with the convictions and. And go to bed at night with the assurance knowing that I'm living for the Lord. Yes, yes. I'm not living for myself. I'm not living for the denomination. We respect the denomination. We respect the council. But you know, I'm living for the Lord. Yes. I'm, li I'm living for Is there anybody here living for the Lord? Yes. My God, hallelujah. You know, but not, you know, anybody who lives for the Lord, you couldn't live for the Lord if you don't live a surrendered life. Yes, right. Where you know and you understand that now you don't own yourself. You know, some folks get around talking about I'll do whatever I feel like it, whatever I feel like it, with whoever I feel like it, however I feel. You haven't known the Lord. Because anyone who's known the Lord knows that you got to die to self. You got to pick up the cross and follow Jesus every day. Yeah. Hallelujah. Marks of a spirit filled believer. And Paul speaking to the church. Begins to identify some very important characteristics and traits of a person who's truly filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, please don't get me wrong. I love, I love jumping for the Lord. I love screaming for the Lord. I know what it is to speak in tongues. I know what it is to stop, uh, 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 hop, skip, and jump, and, and just you know, just turn around. All of that is good. It's okay to get excited for the Lord, but it doesn't mean that you're spirit filled. Can, can, can you guys excuse me? Can I, can I be real? Yeah. There's a brother in church that uh, uh, he says, I don't know how many in Spanish. Every time I say something, he says, all oh, the amens are gone. <laughs> hey, Amen. I don't want you to stop praising the Lord because of what I'm saying. Uh, I want your praise to stand as a witness that we're speaking the truth of the Lord today. Can somebody give the Lord a clap off from today? <laughs> the Paul begins to talk to the church and brings, starts bringing some reality to them and starts talking about some crucial uh, marks that will identify us as, as who we are supposed to be in Christ Jesus. And then in verse 18, you know, he starts saying, you know, don't get drunk with wine. There is dissipation in that. But be filled with the Spirit. Now, anybody who knows what the result of, 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 of a drunk person or what a drunk person looks like, no, you know that it's, it's foolish. It's not good. There's nothing fun about that. Although people make fun of them and laugh at them, you know, and, and, and mock them and stuff like that. But, you know, anytime we become drunk with the things that we aren't supposed to become drunk with, that's, that's what we look like. Then the world starts to mock us. The world starts to make fun of us. We start looking foolish before the world when we need to be starting. We need to look like Jesus. My God, I wish I had a witness here today. So he says, do not be drunk with wine in which... 
is dissipation, but be filled. Be filled. He didn't say be overwhelmed. He said be filled. He didn't say be touched. Some people, you know, it's good to be touched by the power of God, but it's better to be filled. My God, I wish I, I had a witness. Lord, which I got. Sometimes, you know, the only, you know, we, we want a relationship with the Holy Spirit to the extent that God just touched me. That's it. That's it. Just touch me, Lord. Go get on the inside because to get the inside implies that there has to be change. Oh God, I wish I, 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 are you hearing me today, Lord, which I got? See, God can touch you on the outside, but until he gets on the inside, there's not going to be change. All right. That's right. Hallelujah. That's right. Glory to God. So, you know, Paul talking to the church is like, you know, as if to say, this is, it's not enough just to get touched. Uh-huh. Hallelujah. It's about being filled. Yeah. Glory to God. It's not about looking foolish. It's about being filled. It's not about being religious. It's about being filled. It's not about knowing the songs. It's about uh, being filled. Hallelujah. It's not about saying I was touched by the power. It's about allowing the power to transform me. Hallelujah. But before we continue, I want to share the same scripture so that we can get an idea how deep this is. And we're, you know, we're, we're a far taking church. With this teaching. Do not be drunk with wine. Because, you know, sadly, in the Christian community, the argument has become about yeah. wine. Yeah. Well, I, I, I can drink as long as it's uh, a little bit. Uh, as long as there's a word that um, I can drink as long as moderate. Moderate drinking. That'll make you a moderate Christian, man. It won't make you a full Christian. It'll make you a moderate Christian. It won't make you a full believer of the full gospel of Jesus Christ. It'll make you just a moderate one. You know, you're there like you're not there. You believe it when you feel like it. You only see God when you need him. I wish I had a way to say that. I feel good. I feel good. I feel good. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But the fact that Paul is using the example of wine is this Paul's teaching goes beyond the wine. He's talking about the battle between the flesh and the spirit. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. yeah. Hallelujah. That's right. He's talking about you know, the difference between walking in the flesh, being a carnal man, and being a spiritual man. Come on. Walking in the spirit versus living according to the flesh. Come on. Come on. So he identifies specifically wine, but what does wine have to do with the spirit, really? He's really trying to outline the battle and the struggles that we can have with the flesh and the results of us falling into that conduct or lifestyle of living according to the flesh, whereas in the spirit you can be free. You can be delivered. You can, my God, we were talking about the peace of God just a little while ago. Having the peace of God that everything that you will ever need is in the hands of the Lord. But you've got to be filled. Touch somebody's tongue. Be filled with the spirit. Somebody in your family needs to know that you're a real woman of God. Amen. Amen. So 
Somebody at your job needs to know that you're a man of God. Somebody at school needs to know that you're a child of God. You can't be ashamed of it. I said you can't be my God. You can't be ashamed of it.
Bible says. Holy Spirit invaded that place like a rushing wind. Like, I'm in charge now. God, I'm right in me. <laughs> oh, Lord, God. I'm going to start a fire in this place. I'm going to start a fire in this place. I'm going to start a fire in this place. Glory to God. And the Bible says that the Holy Ghost uh, rested upon their heads. Uh, it's a flame of fire. And they began, yes, they began to speak. And then the tongue that the Spirit gave them utterance. Now, I'm not a doctor. But I, I read and I heard that a third of the brain is contained or is uh, considered the speech systems. Hallelujah. And then he starts speaking in tongues until the fire of the Holy Ghost rested upon their head. If you want to have control over your tongue, you need to be filled. I wish I had a witness. Hallelujah. You need to be filled with the Holy Ghost. It's the only way. You can't control the Holy the, 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 the tongue on your own. We need the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit. The CEV version says, don't destroy yourself by getting drunk. There's things in, in the lives of believers that they go through and complain about that they don't like, that it hurts them, that it creates and produces pain in their lives, but they'll never admit that they put themselves, that they put themselves in there. See, that's the problem. The problem is not just identifying what you're going through. The problem is being honest with yourself and with the Lord and admitting, how did you get there? How did you get there? And most of the time, you realize that you were part of the problem. Well, how do I overcome that? Be filled with the Holy Ghost. I wish I had a witness here today. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. Say, Holy Spirit, fill my heart. Fill my mind. Fill it on. Just take control. Just take control over my life. Throwing yourself in my heart. I like this one. The NOG version says, Don't get drunk with online, which leads to wild living. Yeah. <laughs> they just love la vida loca. <laughs> they just wild. They just crazy. They just, you know, you know what a wild beast is? Overstrength. They do whatever they feel like and however they feel like, whoever they feel like, with whoever they feel like, they they're just wild. Sad how many churches are filled with wild folks. Amen. They say, I'll serve the Lord. The Lord understands me. Yeah, he understands that you are wild. <laughs> You're just crazy. Yeah. Well, how do I get over this? Be filled. We oh my God, I wish I had a witness. Huh? The Holy Spirit will establish order. My God. Uh, I said the Holy Ghost uh, establishes order in your life. And you were walking crazy. Now you'll walk like a real man. Now you'll walk like a real woman of God. You won't be walking all crazy and crooked. God is a God of order. He is a holy God.
this. You know what he was talking about? What he was saying? He said, you could not compete unless you play by the rules. Now, anybody know that anything about sports, whether it's volleyball, whether it's tennis, basketball, football, baseball, there's always a white line. Whether it's painting on the wooden floor or it's chalk on the football field or the baseball field, you got to play within the boundary. That means that our God is a God who promotes discipline. Yes. There's no honor with no discipline. That's right. Hallelujah. So we got to stop getting wild here now. Oh, good. Hallelujah. Good, good, good God. Uh, uh, the ERV version says, don't be drunk with wine, which will ruin your life. But be filled. Uh-huh. We hurt ourselves, Bishop. You know what the Lord is going to help us? We can come clean to God and say, you know, Lord, I do this to my son. Every wife wants to blame the husband. Every husband wants to blame the wife. Every parent wants to blame their child. Every child wants to blame mom. Every family wants to blame the next door neighbor. Every church member, not every church member, wants to blame the bishop. Every Every brother wants to blame his sister. He made me do it. Every Adam wants to blame me. Every Eve wants to blame the servant. Everybody wants, nobody wants to blame. Whenever you have a child, don't call her the blame. Because nobody loves the blame. If we could just come humbly to the Lord and position ourselves under his mighty hand. Yeah. Say, Lord, I, I have to admit I've done this to myself. The Bible says that the contrary and humble heart, God will never despise. And that's just an open door. I mean, the floodgates of heaven will just open up. And the Holy Ghost will come to you. And you will be filled with the Spirit. Can you give the Lord a clap off for tonight? The W.E. version, the E. version, <laughs> says, do not get drunk with wine. That is living the wrong way. Do not get drunk with wine. That is living the wrong way. The TLB version says, and do not get drunk on wine, for that is recklessness. Reckless individuals. Now look, God is at work in all of us. And one of the things he helps us is get over our recklessness. When we didn't have Christ, we were reckless individuals. Yes. Come on, let's admit it. We were just reckless. Yes. We were wild. Yes. We were crazy. Yes. We had no boundaries. In Christ Jesus, uh uh-uh. uh. Yeah, we're free. But you ain't free to do whatever you feel like. All right. All right. All right. Well, we've been set free. I sit here for this fucking crazy stuff that he's still wild. Yeah. He's still wild. He's still reckless. That's not the grace of the Lord. Grace has two important aspects. The grace that brings salvation according to the works of Christ. You can't do nothing about that. All you got to do is receive it. But then you got the grace that disciplines you. That involves works. Works. James says, faith without works. Come on, give the Lord a clap off. Faith without works. So is Paul really talking about wine? No, I think, I think he's using wine as a metaphor to talk about the works of the flesh because we're talking about the thing, a battle, a real battle, where in the book of Galatians he says there's a battle between the flesh uh-huh. and the spirit. There's no such thing. I mean, we can get into the argument of wine. There's no such thing. Anything that's going to open up the door to a vice or to a habit or to an addiction is not of God. Not even in a matter of moderate way or one can or two can or two cents. No, God does not applaud anything that would open up the path to destruction. So we know that wine does that. So the metaphor here is not so much about drinking but about the works of the flesh. Either we live according to the flesh or we live according to the spirit. Now, we know the Bible teaches that anything that comes from, from the flesh will produce something. But what it produces is death. It's going to kill you. It's 
is going to ruin you. You will continue to be to be a reckless individual, a wild individual, a non-restrained individual, an undisciplined. And that's what the flesh does. That's what the carnal man looks like. Everything you heard me say right now that the Bible says we should not be speaks of a carnal individual. Now let's let me let me explain something to you that's very important because we as a church, many folks in the church have got have created the habit in their minds. Of, of assuming that the carnal man is the man without Christ. I want you to know that that's completely unbiblical. The man without Christ or the individual without Christ is just a lost individual, a lost soul without faith and without, without hope. The carnal man is someone who says they serve the Lord, but they choose a lifestyle that's not according to the Spirit. That's the problem. He's a believer. She's a believer. But sometimes they believe their own life. So you become that. Whatever you allow to convince you in your mind and to get into your heart, your heart is the seat of the emotions. That's what you're going to become. That's what you're. And the, and that, that's it. And that's what you're going to become. But when you are filled with the Spirit. And, and Christ is enthroned in your heart through the infilling of the Holy Spirit. You know, the Holy Spirit will never promote himself. The Holy Spirit will always promote Jesus <laughs> and the will of the Lord and what he wants for you. So what does a spirit-filled a spirit church look like? I'm going to bring you back a little to the beginning. We can't talk about a spirit-filled church until we address who are the spirit-filled individuals. So no one is going to walk out of this room thinking that the sermon was for Joe. Is there any Joe here? Don't feel bad, Joe. I'm talking about you. That the sermon, oh, that was Simon. Hmm? That was Peter. Hmm? I hope he got his. Huh? Give the Lord a clap offer today. So when you start reading chapter 5 and you start addressing verse by verse until we get to verse 18, you'll have a clear picture of what Peter, uh, what Paul is addressing here to the church, being led by the Spirit of God. Amen. So when it comes to a spirit-filled church, we could not have a spirit, we will never have a spirit-filled church, Bishop. We will never have. A spirit-filled church, a spirit-filled congregation until we start having spirit-filled individuals. So your place in this church is important. We gotta stop back acting like this is just for the leaders. Come on. Those are just for the members. Just because you're not a member on paper doesn't mean you have nothing to do with this. The fact that you congregate here, you're included. Yeah. The fact that you even say that you're a child of God, you're included. Thank you, God. Angels, thank you, God. You're a part of this. God is talking to us. Amen. We're members of the body of Christ. Let's not play the part of it to be members of a congregation. Are you saved? Yes. Are you washed by the blood? Yes. Then you have everything to do with this event. So what are the marks of a spirit-filled believer that would eventually contribute to us being a spirit-filled church? Number one, verse one says, therefore, be imitators of God as dear children. A person filled with the spirit of God is a person who is an imitator of Jesus Christ. You ain't imitating your friends at school. You ain't imitating the crazy folks at work. You ain't imitating your crazy, wild, reckless uncle. No. You serve the Lord. But well, that's my family. You can't compromise your salvation with family. All right. 
I wish I had a whip. Oh, I got kind of quiet in here all of a sudden. Well, that's my uncle. You know, I got to go to the picnic. I know I was supposed to drink, but it was my family. Uh-uh. You got drunk. You went with the flesh. You abandoned the spirit. I wish I had a witness here today.
spirit-filled believer. Let's not live. We got to hurry up. A spirit-filled believer, verses 8 through 14, the Bible says, For you were once in darkness, but now you are in the light of the Lord. Walk as a child of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. A spirit-filled believer is a person who walks in the light of the Lord. It's not hiding behind anything. Their lives are transparent. Their testimony is clear. They live and have nothing. I have nothing to hide. Walk in the light of the Lord. And I live to be a reflection of Jesus Christ. Number 5, verses 15 through 16 says, See then that you walk circumspectly. Not as fools, but as wise. Redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Verse 17, the very first part says, Therefore, do not be unwise. A spirit-filled believer is a believer who conducts themselves with the wisdom of God wisely. Well, Pastor, what do I do? I need some wisdom. Listen, wisdom doesn't mean that you don't know nothing. You can have all the information and be unwise. You can have all the knowledge and be unwise. Wisdom is not that you don't know nothing. Wisdom is that what you do know, you're not applying. That's all it means. Have you ever spoken to individuals? Have you ever sat down and given folks some advice? And they sit there and it's after you speak to them, they tell you, I know all of that. Am I the only pastor who goes with that? I sat with countless of folks, spent hours counseling them, only for them to get up and say, you know, Pastor, I know all of that. Oh, well, where's the wisdom? Where's the application? Where's the ability to put the function what God wants us to do? And you know what they're doing? They're wasting time. They waste God's time. They waste your time. Now you just spent three hours in the office with somebody who don't care about what you said because they already know it. And they're going to walk out of there like, I don't need to do that. And they're wasting your time. Time that you could have been with your wife, your children, resting, having dinner. How many times do we give up our plates to have to come home and reheat it in a microwave? You know it don't taste the same. It doesn't taste like rubber now. I could have had it nice and fresh off the stove, off the pack, but because I loved them enough to see me in the office, only for him to get up and say, you know, I know that already. What are you looking for? Just let me know. I just need something else. Yeah, you need wisdom. And the Bible says if anybody lacks wisdom, you can't get it from the pastor. You can't get it from the bishop. You can't get it from the deacon. You got to get it from God. Somebody needs the Holy Ghost. If not, you're wasting your time. You're wasting my time. You're wasting God's time. Look what the writer says. He says, redeeming the time, man. Stop wasting time. Value your time and value everybody else's time around you. Time is valuable. Time is precious. We ain't got time to play games. Turn it out. We'll see that right at the church. Watch this right now. This boy had a Chinese looking one of you and talking too much. 